Well, what is it then? Why aren't you here? I'm just not going to make it. Elena, don't do this to me. Not again. I can't help it, Billy Joe. Don't do it, honey. You get yourself right on down here to the station. I'll try to fix it. I can't, Billy Joe. We'll put on Ricky first. I'm not going to be there, Billy Joe. Billy Joe! That's it. We're through, Elena and me. What? Elaine and me, we're through. What happened? Billy Joe hung up on me. Just because you have a stomachache? Well, I'm surprised Billy Joe isn't more understanding than that. I'll tell you, I'll have a talk with him. Get out, Ruby! Oh, now, Elaine. Now, look, you got what you want. Get out! Oh, Ashley, dear, come in. Hello, Mrs. Whaler. I forgot to tell John I was going shopping this afternoon, and he, he took the car to be serviced, but he should be back shortly, if you don't mind waiting. Listen, I don't mind at all. Mrs. Whaler, actually, I don't even feel like going shopping. Now, I promised your Aunt Hildy last night that I would see to it that you have a suitable fall wardrobe. I don't need a wardrobe. Oh, Hildy told me you were going to be stubborn about this, and I said, I'll show her stubborn. Look, I'll... Justin is moving out to the Marshall Ranch this afternoon. I thought he was going to move into your apartment. <laughs> he didn't even tell me. I had to hear it from somebody else. Have you tried to talk to him about it? Oh, yes. He's very casual about it. Recently, Justin has been very casual about our whole relationship. Well, I don't understand why he'd want to move to the ranch. Oh, well, he says it's to protect his interests. So he thinks that Jenny and Raina are going to turn his grandmother against him. Knowing Raina, I suspect he's right. Oh, Mrs. Wheeler. His grandmother's already against him. He's doing it because of me. He's pulling further and further away from me. Ashley... Do you love Justin? I do. Then you can't just give up like this. I'm going to town, Jenny. Is there anything you need? Oh, nothing I can think of. Would you stay for supper, Rena? Yes, she'll stay. Good. All right, everybody! Hey, come on, fellas. Front room on the left here. Hi, right, Grandma. I'm moving in. Put that junk back in the truck. Come on, fellas. Front room on the left, right? Justin, here. you don't own this place. I own part of it, and I'm moving in. Go back to Houston, where you belong. This is my home now. Come on, get out of the way. Not a chance. Now, Rena, there's nothing we can do. Do you want to give up without a fight, Kate? Come on, ladies. Oh! Oh! Get Starring Beverly McKenzie. And then where's Elena Decker? I, I, I'm she dead. hasn't even rehearsed her numbers with a band yet. I got you covered. I don't want to hear about you getting me covered. I want Elena Decker to get her you-know-what down here and rehearse. We go on the air in 15 minutes. Look, Phil, there's been some... Elena's not coming. What did you say? I said Elena's not coming. She's not going to be on your show today. Why, you little creep... Joe? 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 You can't just sit back and be passive in a situation like this. You have to make yourself indispensable to Justin. How? What does he want that you can help him achieve? And don't tell me it's Rena Decker. He wants to get rid of Ryan Connor. 
I mean, that's his newest passion. Well, that's wonderful. You're Ryan's assistant, so you should be of great help. Darling, you have to choose between your loyalty to Ryan and your love for Justin. That shouldn't be too difficult. Mrs. Wheeler, Ryan Connor trusts me as his executive assistant. And Justin trusts you as his future wife. Ryan Connor has no future anyway. Oh, he's done a competent job running the company, but he's, he's cautious and conservative. Justin is a doer. A man of vision and action. That's why Alex was so successful. Do you really think that Justin is like Mr. Wheeler? Oh, in many ways, yes. Alex started with one room, one desk, one secretary, one telephone. And he built an empire. Do you really believe that Justin can do the same thing? Of course I do. And you are as bright and clever as Justin is... Perhaps more so. I'm sure you can find a way to help him. Ah, no! Come on! You girls have made your point! Now stop it! Are you all right? I will be. You could have given me a warning, Justin. Oh, that would have been the polite and thoughtful thing to do. I told you I wanted to make this place my home, Grandma. Oh, but you didn't tell me you were planning on living out here. Oh, well, I am. I just hope that we can all live together here in harmony. You can run the house the way you've always run it, Grandma, and I promise I'll do my best to stay out of your way. Jenny, you can... Uh, you're welcome to stay here with us. There's plenty of room. Where's the bride to be? She's in town. Justin, I won't have Ashley living out here until you two are married. I know. That would make you uncomfortable, Grandma. There's nothing for you to worry about. Ashley will not stay overnight here until we're married. And when will that be? Well, I'm not sure. Depends on a lot of things. I'm surprised, Grandma, you're not fighting me the way Jenny and Rena are. There's a time to fight, Justin, and a time to accept what you can't win. I see. I saw the look you gave Rena. I was just smiling at her, Grandma. You're engaged to Ashley. She's grieving for a husband that she believes you killed. Grandma. If you make any trouble for Rena. I will fight you, Justin. Now, you just concentrate on your oil business and your Ashley Linden. And you leave Rena alone. Get your hands off me! I'll break wait, wait, your neck! Wait, wait. Calm down, Phil. Everything will be all right. What are you talking about? Everything's going to be all right. Our ratings are in the gutter and they're still going down. I finally get a chance for someone to come on this show that'll draw an audience. And this... Little twerk. Hey, look a little hot, Billy Joe. We're going to work something out, Oh, Bill. sure, we're going to work something out. We're going to have a ten-minute gap in the show. Well, uh, Elena's brother will just have to sing a couple more songs. Wait a minute, Elena's brother doesn't have music for a couple more songs. You got any more bright ideas, Ben? Huh? You're going to pay for this, Mr. Manager. We had a deal. We didn't make no deal. Oh, yes, we had a deal. Hey, Your guys, sister came calm to... down, will you please? This isn't going to solve the problem. I got an idea. You stay out of this. You're lucky to even be on this now, show. Now, wait a minute. I'm trying to help Phil. Come on. Just listen to him out, will you? Blowing your stack isn't going to help anybody. After I sing, Billy Joe could come out and talk about Elena and her career. What? You Are you listen? crazy? Just listen, Phil. Look, he could talk about how they got started. You know, talk about what it took to get the record to take off and become a hit. People like that sort of thing. You're satisfied? I listened. Well, it sounds like a good idea to me. Well, I think it stinks. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to have that little twerp on my show. Hey, that's great, because this little twerp wouldn't be on your show for all the money in the First National Bank of Houston. Billy Joe, wait a minute, Come man. On. Cool. Billy is Elena's manager. I don't care if he's Cecil B. DeMille resurrected from the dead. He's not going to talk on the Phil Roberts show. Now, Phil. Phil. 
Do you remember the campaign you waged to become Alex's secretary? I thought that I was rather subtle about that. <laughs> you were. And you were successful. Yes. Getting Justin to set a wedding date should be just as simple. Hello, Grant. Iris. Oh. Ashley, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. It's nice to see you again, Mr. Wheeler. Well, it's nice to see you. No, I don't mean to intrude. No, no, no. I need to leave. But I do want to go shopping sometime, if you still want to. It's fine. Just call me, darling. Okay. Bye-bye. I'll see you, Victoria. Thank you. I think she'll be just fine. You're very fond of her, aren't you? Indeed I am. Her Aunt Hilly was one of my closest friends, and I... I feel a certain responsibility toward her. Dennis hasn't needed me for a long time. If I can help Ashley in any way, I shall. Oh, well, she's lovely. Ryan's very lucky to have her working for him. She won't be working for him much longer. Is she leaving the company? No. Ryan is. I didn't see Justin's car. Uh, he's gone over to the Harper place to check on the, the clearing up operation. Where have you two been? We went for a walk down by the creek. You were going to leave until you saw that Justin's car wasn't here. I can't be around him. I understand. Kate, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I can stay either. I don't blame you, Jenny. I just hate to leave you alone. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. Kate, I understand. Everything you ever loved is being taken away from you. Max, Jenny, little Steve, even this land. You know, before Mr. Marshall died, I promised him that I'd keep the ranch going. Now it just gets harder... And harder. I really don't know. Whether I can keep on or not. Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. She needs time by herself. I guess you're right. I just feel so helpless. I don't... It's so unfair what Justin's doing to Kate. Would she just leave this place, go somewhere else? Think she'd be any happier? No, I don't. There's nothing we can do. I'm certainly not giving up. I'm going to find a way to fight Justin. Oh, Rena, don't look at me that way. And don't you dare give me a lecture. Mama did already. Honey, that's not the answer. It's the only answer, Jenny. I'm going to wipe him out. Short at all. Wish I could have kept them all. Oh, I love them every one. I'd like to thank them for the charms holding me in their arms. And I hope they had some fun.
Is any wonderful folks? Elena Decker's brother, Ricky Decker. And he's going to be just as big as his sister one of these days. Ricky Decker. And now, I know I told you earlier that Elena Decker was supposed to be on the show, but uh, she was taken ill at the last minute and unfortunately can't be here. And no one's sadder than I because I'm a big fan of hers. But we are very lucky to have the next best thing to Elena Decker, her manager, and my good buddy, Billy Joe Wright. So let's give him a big... Texas welcome for Billy Joe Wright. Come on, Billy Joe. Here. Over here. Come over here. It's really good to have you on the show with us today, Billy Joe. Is he? <laughs> got a sense of humor. Here, sit down. You know, come to think of it, I guess you got to have a sense of humor to manage a big singing star like Elena Decker. <clears throat> yeah, you do. Uh, I think the uh, studio audience and the people watching us would uh, appreciate uh, to know how you discovered Elena. There must have been a big talent search. Well, I didn't discover her, and there wasn't any search. Um, Elena and I were friends, and I heard her sing, and, uh, well, I, I thought she had real talent. Oh, well, that sounds a little too simple. Uh, you, Elena and you must have had some setbacks. Well, that's all we had was setbacks. Well, I don't call uh, uh, her hit record, It's All Over Town, a setback. Yeah, well, that, that hit record almost wasn't done. Is that right? Yeah. As a matter of fact, the first time I took Elena in to see the booking agent into his office, we all but got thrown out in our ears. He didn't like what he heard. He didn't hear anything. The guy was mad because we didn't call first before showing up at his office. You didn't call him first? Well, no, I, I'm not going to call up somebody I don't even know. In other words, he was a perfect stranger. Well, yeah, I guess you could say that. That's and, right. And you just showed up there on his doorstep. Yeah, you might say that. Yeah, I've done a lot of that showing up on doorsteps. It seems to work the best that way. Well, i got to hand it to you, good buddy. you got a lot of guts, but wouldn't it have been easier just to go through normal channels? Well, yeah, it might have been easier, but it sure wouldn't have been as fast. Look, there's one thing I learned from managing Elena, and that's that, and that's that life j just doesn't hand you success. It, it, you... You, you got to go out after it, and even then you might not get it. But when that happens, if somebody just tosses you out the door, you got to dust yourself off and just go charge it right back in again. You, you got to take life by the by the horns because if you don't, nobody else is going to. Has Ryan resigned? Not yet, but he will. Iris, we've been through this a hundred times. You're becoming a bitter, vindictive woman who would rather destroy a man than admit the possibility that you might be wrong. How? There you speak to me that way. Because it's the truth, that's why. And the sooner you face that, the happier you'll be. You're the one who refuses to face the truth. Iris Alex is dead. Let go. Not until Ryan is punished. He was my brother. I loved him at least as much as you did. And I miss him as much as you do. But there are other ways of compensating for that loss. Much healthier and much more productive ways. Taking Ashley under your arm is one way. Reconciling your differences with Dennis is another. Revenge is no answer. It's, it's not revenge. It's justice. All right, all right, all right. Supposing you do manage to oust Ryan, is that going to make you happy? I mean, really happy? It most certainly will. How's Kate? Feeling a little better. You know, I've I've never seen her go to pieces like that. She's tired. She told me that for the first time in her life, she feels old. If we can stop Justin from drilling out here, he'll move back into town. I think Ryan can stop him for a while. How? Oh. Well, if Justin stays with the company, Ryan will still have a say whether World Oil leases the mineral rights. Well, can't someone else re lease those rights? Oh, uh, that would be a conflict of interest for Justin. He would either have to leave the company and drill or stay with the company and not drill, at least not out here. Do you know if Justin is aware of that? I assume he is. Do you think that Ryan will lease the mineral rights to this land? Ryan's opposed to it. But if he gets a lot of pressure from the board and the officers of the company... Oh, well, you know Justin will do that. Probably. But I think Ryan can stall. He'll try as long as he can. Well, that'll help Kate get herself together. I hope so. 
How do you feel? Oh, uh, right hand's a little sore here, but uh, how's yours? <laughs> it is a little sore, you know. First time in my life I ever hit anyone. Well, it's not my first time, but it sure did surprise Justin. <laughs> it surprised me even more. It sure felt good. Now, don't you go making a habit of this unless you have my help, you hear? Okay. <laughs> Your dizzy spell's over? Mm hmm How late is your period? A couple weeks. What do you do for morning sickness? Mm. I eat uh, soda crackers. That seemed to help a little bit. Of course, it's different for everybody. You might ask Bart when you go to see him. Max wanted a baby more than anything else in the world. I know. I promised him a baby for spring. Hope I can keep my promise, Max. Will you go get a checkup and make sure about that. I think I'll take Kate some tea. Think that Justin will stay the night? Probably not. I hope not. I hate to leave Kate tonight. I think Justin's going to be spending a whole lot of time in town with Ashley. I'm not so sure about that. Honey, Justin hates to sleep alone. I doubt if he'd spend more than two nights a week out here. Hello, Lillene. Hi, Jenny. I saw Rena's car out there. Oh, uh, yeah, she's upstairs with Kate. Do you want to talk to her? No, I just wanted to check on Miss Kate. I don't want to see Rena. Why? I haven't seen her since Max died, and I know I burst into tears. Honey, Rena knows you loved Max. I don't think she'd mind if you cried. Come on in. It's hot <laughs> out there. So, how's it going over at the... With the cleaning up. <laughs> Just fine. That's good. You know, Ryan tells me that he sent over, World Oil sent over some trees and shrubs uh, to replace the ones that were destroyed after the explosion. Yeah. I'm surprised you're not over there supervising. Well, I was until... Until what? Till Bubba Wadsworth showed up. Once again, I'd like to thank my guests on today's show. Billy Joe Wright, good buddy, thanks for being here. And Ricky... Decker, right. Thank you, Bill. And Jim Slater and his musical ants. Now, remember to tune in tomorrow, because we've got a great show for you. We've got Dan River, the star of From Here to Maternity, and gossip column Dolores French, who's going to give us all a scoop on her new book, I Heard It on the Radio. Got a great show for you tomorrow, so you all come back. This is Bill Roberts saying, keep cool, keep happy, and keep tuning in. out the window. I looked out the window. I didn't see you. Well, I was just hiding behind that air conditioning unit. You should have called. What was I going to do? Just wait here until Ruby decided to come into the bathroom? Oh, it's okay. Then I uh, went over to some neighbor's window, saw the time for the show to be over, and crawled back in. Where is Ruby? I asked her to leave. She knows Elena. I can't stay here and keep doing this to you. Great show, Phil. Mmm. Get that creep out of here. I couldn't get out of here fast enough, Roberts. I'll tell you another thing. I'm glad Lenny couldn't make it here. I wouldn't want her on a stupid two-bit show like this. I don't want you to ever set foot on this studio again. Do you hear me? Take it easy, Phil. Do you hear me? I don't want to set eyes on you or your client or your client's brother ever again. Come on, Ricky. Let's get out of this stupid place. Furniture? Nope. Justin is moving in. Justin is going to live here at the ranch? Yes, ma'am. Well, that doesn't 
doesn't mean that Miss Kate has to move out, does it? No, I think Kate will stay right here. I can't imagine her living anywhere else. Neither can I. What about you and Steve? I haven't decided yet. I'll be happy to look after Miss Kate. Now, you don't worry about her. Thanks, then. What's wrong? Well, if Justin is going to live here, does that mean that Bubba Wadsworth is going to be hanging around? Well, I don't think Justin will spend much time here. He works in Houston and his social life is there. Why are you so afraid of Bubba Wadsworth? I have to go. Lurleen, sit down. Now, I want to know what's upsetting you so. I can't tell you. Honey, every time I mention Bubba's name, you freeze. Now, if you can tell me what's wrong, maybe I can help you. It's so embarrassing. Lillian, there's no reason to be embarrassed around me. Did Bubba come on to you? Make advances, is that it? Well, he keeps asking me for dates. And I keep turning him down. At first, I was nice about it, but he wouldn't give up. Did you talk to him this afternoon? I was talking to one of the men that were planting trees. Bubba comes up to me and he keeps putting his hands all over me. I swear I'm not, I'm not doing anything to encourage him. I know. You know, we never had money, but I know the difference between right and wrong. I know that. I just can't get him to leave me alone. Did all this start when they were drilling the well? Does Justin know about it? I don't know. I sure couldn't tell him. Well, I think I'm going to talk to Justin. Oh, Jenny... Please don't do that. Honey, you're so afraid. I'll just, I'll just stay away from Bubba for the next day or so. Will you promise that you'll stay here with Kate and not go over to your place? Oh, please don't say anything to Miss Kate about all this. She's got enough to worry about. And I'm so embarrassed. Okay. Okay, I promise. Thank you. Where are you going? Um, Kate, down by Kate the car. Hello, Lily. Hello, Raina. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I loved him, too. I know. Max told me how you fell in love with him when you were seven years old. I used to wait for him by the road. He would drive by in the morning. I asked him to wait for me until I grew up so we could get married. He always said he would. But I'm glad he married you. He loved you more than anything in this world. He told me so when he danced with me at the barn dance. Well, he only danced with me and Jenny. And my mama and you. You must have been awfully special to him. Ah, what can I do for you? I need help, Evan. About Iris. Oh, is she ill? No, no. She's... She's obsessed with this idea that Alex was murdered. I can't get through. She holds out Ryan responsible for Alex's death, and she won't stop until she's destroyed him professionally and personally. Huh. I had hoped that those feelings would subside along with her grief. No, no, if anything at all, her feelings against Ryan have increased. If you can give me any kind of idea as to how I can help her, I'd certainly appreciate hearing it. Well, there is something. Can you spare a few minutes? Well, certainly. I'd like for you to meet Dr. Watkins. He's been working on a research project concerning stroke victims. I think some of his theories would be of interest to you. All right. I love you, Elena. You know that. But what kind of a person would I be if I just stood here and watched our lives fall apart knowing I'm the reason? But that won't happen, Joe. There's no future for us. Who is it? 
Me, Elena. Billy Joe. What are you going to say to him? I don't know. Pleasure to meet you, Doctor. Dr. Watkins is a research fellow in neurology. His major work of interest here is in cerebrovascular disease, uh, particularly strokes. The reason Dr. Douglas wanted us to meet is that uh, one of my cases in my study is Alex Wheeler. Well, are the cases that you study selected at random? Well, we try to gather a variety of cases to arrive at a consensus. Now, that's the standard procedure in these studies. Of course, there are always exceptions. Was my brother an exception, Doctor? Well... I became interested in Mr. Wheeler's case because he was so well-known, so this morning I called Dr. Douglas with some questions regarding the case. What kind of question? I suspect that Mr. Wheeler did not have another stroke. I don't think that's what caused his death. Is um, Darlene with Kate? Yes. Did you ever meet Bubba Wadsworth? No, why? Darlene's scared to death of him. I made a promise to stay here until the cleanup operation is finished and Bubba's not around anymore. Well, he has enough sense not to come around here, doesn't he? Lord, look who's coming. Hello, Jenny. Rena. Surprised to see you, Rena. Just out for the afternoon, Ashley. Justin's not here right now, Ashley. Did you know that your fiancé is planning to move in with Kate? Well, he's been, um, talking about it for a while. Do you know when he'll be back? No, we don't know. If you, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to wait. Have a seat. Rena. May I talk to you a minute? on TV. Is that supposed to be a joke? You don't look sick. No, I, I'm not sick. You have every right to be angry at me, Billy Joe. I'm not angry. I'm past angry. Well, I wish you'd just yell at me or something. It would make me feel better. The last thing I want is for you to feel better. I want you to feel just like I do. I'm sorry. Sorry ain't good enough anymore. What is it, Elena? What's wrong with you? I just couldn't make it to the show. Why? There's got to be a reason. I just couldn't. Elena, if you're in some kind of trouble, I, I want to help. But I can't do a thing unless you talk to me. I can't, Billy Joe. I just don't understand, Elena. I mean, I, I used to think there was nothing we couldn't talk about. What's going on, Elena? I, uh... I guess I just don't have what it takes, Billy Joe. I know that ain't true, and you know it, too. Billy Joe. Now, you heard me on that TV show. Everything I said was true. I meant every word of it. You're just like me, darling. You're just like me. You knew what you wanted right from the beginning. Remember that dream we had? Remember that? We had it right in our hands, darling. And you want to just throw that all away without a fight? I have been nothing but trouble to you, Billy Joseph. Yes, but that's not your fault, darling. Most of it's my fault. You just had a lot of hard breaks, that's all. Billy Joe, it's just not going to work out. You'd be better off without me. Get lost. 
I think that's what you should be telling me. What I'm telling you, Elena, is to talk to me. I am, Billy Joe. And I'm telling you that it is not going to work out. So you've given up? Boy, I guess I figured you all wrong, didn't I? Elena, I never figured you as a quitter. So what am I supposed to do now? You still have your job at the coop, Elena. Oh, you make good money there. Oh, yeah, sure, the coop's fine, darling. But I'm not worried about the coop. Remember the dream we had? Huh? I want to make you a star, Don. I want to make you a superstar. Billy Joe, it's over. certainly possible that he could have suffered another stroke. But you don't think so? I can't prove my suspicions because an autopsy wasn't done. But when I first talked with Evan, there was no suspicion of anything other than a stroke. Oh, I'm aware of that. In fact, if I were the uh, physician in attendance, I don't think I would have thought an autopsy necessary. It's only in light of my further well, research. Wait, doctor, is there enough evidence to go to the police? Oh, no. I can't prove anything at all. And the research findings are certainly open to different... Uh, Interpretations. What's your interpretation? I don't think Mr. Wheeler's death was caused by a stroke at all. I think it was suffocation. Rita, I'm so sorry about Max. I hold Justin responsible. I know that. But it's not true, Rena. It's not right. He, he feels terrible about Justin feels terrific. Because now nobody can prove that he was flat, Julie. That's all he cared about. He never wanted Max to get hurt. Justin doesn't give a damn about anyone but himself. That's not true, Rena. I have known Justin for a long time, and I know what kind of person he's turned into. He's ambitious and ruthless. You think the same about me, don't you? Oh, no, no. You haven't turned into Justin's class. Not yet, anyway. I suggest that you take a long, hard look at the man you're going to marry before you commit yourself. I've already done that. He uses people. When he has no use of them, he just gets rid of them, like yesterday's newspaper. He will do that to you eventually. I'm willing to take that chance. Why? Because of money? Power? Because I love him, Rena. It's that simple. You're not as smart as I thought you were. You loved Max. Max is different. Max was a good person. I was proud of Max. How can you be proud of a man who's responsible for Max's death? Rena. Rena, Justin is not the one that blew up the well. Justin was slant drilling and Max knew it. You did too, honey. 
I'm going to take care of Justin. I'm going to make him pay for what he did to Max. And if you don't want to get hurt, I suggest you get out of the way. I can take care of myself. Sit yourself, darling. Don't say I never warned you. What are you warning Ashley about? About you, Justin. What are you so steamed up about? Get your hands off me. I'm just trying to be friendly. We're not friends, Justin. We never will be. You save your pretty speeches for little Ashley here. She still believes you. Justin, why won't you just leave Rena alone? I didn't do anything to Rena except try to be friendly. I'm really surprised you're here. Surprised or disappointed? I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised. Well, were you expecting Rena to be here to welcome you to the ranch? I could have done without the welcome that Rena and Ginny gave me. Oh, yeah. Me, too. What's the matter? Nothing. They just weren't very happy to see me, that's all. Ashley, if you're uncomfortable being here... Well, what kind of welcome did your grandmother give you? Oh, less than cheerful. Well, Grandma will be all right. As soon as she gets used to my being around here. You're counting on Rena to change her mind, too, aren't you? Ashley, Rena is holding me responsible for Max's death. Well, I know that. Anything that I can do to turn her around from that, I'll do. You won't succeed. Oh, you're wrong. Anything I can do to convince her, I'll convince her. I see. My darling, it's nothing personal. I have my image to protect. I won't be able to take over world oil if everyone thinks that I caused Max's death. Oh, Justin, I wonder if you're ever going to be able to take over world oil, period. Oh, you bet I will. As soon as I find a way to get rid of of Ryan Connor. Do you have any ideas? No, no, but I'm working on it. Well, I do. I've got the perfect solution. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas. you too, Paige. Oh, I can't tell you how much I've wanted to hear you say that. Got something? <laughs> What's this? It's a hundred dollar bill. Dennis, I don't want your money. Paige, that's all you ever wanted. No. We can make love now. No, oh, no, that's that's not true. Yes, it's true, Paige. No. Yes, it's true. Yes. Admit it. No, it's not true. Admit it. No, it's, it's not true. true. It's not. Admit it, Paige. Come on. No. Admit it, Paige. Admit it. 
Admit it. Admit it. Admit it. Dennis Carrington. I want you to get over to my apartment as fast as you can. That's right. We're going to set Paige's little surprise up for today. Ryan, thank you for coming. Oh, it's no problem, Grant. Jenny and I were in the neighborhood looking at houses. I thought you were building out at the ranch. Well, we were until uh, Justin bought Barrett's share of the ranch. So there's no way we're going to live out there now, right? Anyway, Jenny and I found a couple of houses we like, and uh, she's trying to decide which one she wants. Is Iris here? No, no, she's in a meeting with her broker. So what do you want to talk to me about? I want to talk about Alex's death. Ryan, I went out to Gulf Coast Hospital yesterday to talk to Evan Douglas about finding some way of ending Iris's obsession with holding you responsible for Alex's death. Was Evan able to help you? No. As a matter of fact, there is now some suspicion that the cause of Alex's death was not a stroke. I love you. I love you, too. Especially for coming up with the idea of finding the missing Mr. Johnson. How'd you get that idea? Oh. Well, I was trying to figure out a way that I could help you move up in the company. And I remembered that Mr. Johnson was working on something for Mr. Wheeler when Mr. Wheeler had his first stroke. You thought it was something big, something important? Mm-hmm. You know, Ryan Connor tried to find out what it was. And then we discovered that Mr. Johnson had disappeared along with his work file. So what I figured was if you found him and you solved the puzzle that you would make some good points with the officials of the company and the board of directors. You had no idea what Mr. Johnson was on to. No. Only Mr. Johnson can tell you that. Then we just have to find our Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Starring Beverly McKenzie. What gave Evan Douglas the idea that Alex may have been murdered? A uh, Dr. Watkins. He's been doing research on stroke victims. Now, uh, he seems to feel that Alex may have been suffocated. Suffocated? That's right. He has no proof. I mean, his uh, findings are inconclusive, and they certainly won't stand up in a court of law. Does Iris know about this? No, no. And I don't want to tell her. She's already exercised enough about this. It'll just send her into a frenzy. But it won't do any good. Who would have killed Alex? I don't know. Ryan, as you know, I hadn't seen my brother in several years. I don't know who his associates are. I thought you might be able to come up with something. No, I can't think of anyone who would want Alex murdered. But did he have any trouble within the company or, or any other company with whom he was doing business? I don't know. I... Had he fired anyone recently or caused some other company to... No, I, I can't think of anyone. We're going to have to tell the police. Why? We'll be telling them essentially what Iris has been saying. Suspicions, nothing more. But what about Dr. Watkins now? Can't he pursue the matter? Alex was cremated. There's no way of determining cause of death. Now. Well, I'm going to tell you, I have no intention of letting this matter drop. Neither do I. But it seems to me what we can do is a little investigating on our own. See what we can come up with. Okay, let's do it. Listen, Grant, uh, are you sure... You don't want to tell Iris about no, this? No, no. As a matter of fact, my instincts tell me that you shouldn't tell Jenny either, but that's up to you. No, no, no. I, I don't like the idea of keeping secrets from Jenny. Ryan, she'll be as upset as you are about this. Okay, I'll think about it. Now, where should we start first? Well, 
I think we ought to find out who Alex's enemies were, real or imagined. I'm going to check Alex's appointment book for a see who we met with the last few days he was in his office. Uh, you're handling his estate. Maybe you can come up with something in the financial records. All right, right, I'll start there. Okay. See you later. Yes. Thanks a lot. Man. Where do you intend to start looking for Mr. Johnson? I haven't the faintest idea, but I'll bet you you do. Huh? Well, as a matter of fact, I do have an idea or two. Oh, I'm listening. All right. I know two of the secretaries and personnel. How can they help? Well, I figure that we can get them to pull the personal file on Mr. Johnson. Maybe we can find some kind of clue in that. What if, uh, what if Mr. Johnson's file just doesn't tell us anything? What that? Well, there are CPA associations all over the state and country. <laughs> so? Well, so Mr. Johnson was a certified public accountant. I, I believe that he'd be bound to join one of the associations. So what we do is we get someone to call, find out if he's paying his dues, and from that, we can find out where he lives or where he works. You mean they just they just give out information like that? Well, no. I mean, you do have to be a little clever about it. But it's not impossible to find out that information. I wonder why Ryan Connor didn't follow through on Mr. Johnson. Or did he? I suppose he could have checked it out without me knowing it, but... Uh-uh. I doubt it. You know I keep pretty close tabs on everything in that office. What if Ryan Connor was responsible for Mr. Johnson's disappearance? Oh, not a chance. He was just as puzzled about the whole thing as I was. Or pretended to be puzzled. Are you kidding me? Ryan Connor is the worst liar in the whole world. If he even thought about getting close to not telling the truth about something, you'd know it immediately. If he tried to cover anything up, I'd know it in a second. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, do you know me that well, too? Hey, you bet I do. Well, I just have to watch myself from now on, I guess. <laughs> you know, hmm. if we were more honest with each other, it'd be better for both of us. I'm always honest with you, Ashley. At least I try to be. Some of the time? All of the time. You certainly seem to be in a hurry to give Paige her come up and Well, she's about to have lunch with my father at the top of the World Club. But Elliot was out of town. Well, he's back. I still don't see why he can't wait it for It can't her. wait, that's why. My, my, my. We are impatient, aren't we? Listen to me, Parnell. You don't seem to understand the situation. If we wait any longer, Paige is going to move in on him. Move in? Oh, come on. You know what I mean. Is that really what you're worried about? Seems to me that Elliot's big enough to take care of himself. You know, sometimes I get the feeling you wouldn't mind getting together with Paige again yourself. Look, you just keep your feelings to yourself, because I'm not interested in what you think. Look, I wouldn't blame you. And Paige is good. Very good. What about Brent? Will he join us today? Sure. What if he has other plans? He'll cancel. You seem pretty sure of yourself. Hey, you're investing in his next film, aren't you? I don't think you have to worry about his not making himself free. Are you sure you uh, want Paige to see you with Jack Brent? I'm sure. I think it's time that we up the stakes a little. That should be all right. Thank you, Hello. How are you, Paige? You look well. Thank you. So do you. Thank you. Have you managed to tear yourself away long enough to have lunch with me? Absolutely. I wouldn't dream of missing hearing about the newscasters' convention. I'm warning you, I want a detailed account. Well, I'm afraid it would put you to sleep in two seconds flat. The less <laughs> said about it, the better. Oh, look, here's Dennis. Oh, Paige. Yes? Well, I looked for you at the station, Dennis. I, uh, I wanted to ask you to join Paige and me for lunch. But this must be telepathy. I'll have Alfredo set another table for... Oh, uh, Paige, I don't think I'm going to be able to join you for lunch today. Well, oh. do you have a previous engagement? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I do. I'm supposed to meet someone here about investing in a film project. A guy named Jack Brent. Did you see Iris when you stopped by to have a talk with Grant? No, fortunately, she was at her stockbroker's. I'm awfully glad that you and your uncle are getting to know each other. I only met Grant a couple of times, but I have very good feelings about him. He's certainly very supportive of you. What's wrong? 
Oh, nothing. Ryan, I hope that you're not going to let this nonsense of viruses about your killing Alex destroy any possible relationship you could have with your uncle. No, I think it might bring us closer together, as a matter of fact. Hmm. You know, I, I just thought of it now, but... Iris and I are kind of in a similar situation. She thinks that someone is responsible for Alex's death. And I know someone is responsible for Max's death. That's the difference. Iris is wrong. Well, I have to prove that I had nothing to do with Alex's death. Can you prove it? Oh, I don't know, Rena. I, I'm just not going to give up trying. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life with this thing hanging over my head. The only one that believes it is Iris. No, no, that's not necessarily true. Justin only believes it because he wants your job. You better get him out of the company, Ryan. And the sooner the better. And now I'll tell somebody else that you better get rid of. That's Ashley Linden. Ashley? Oh, yes, yes. She's very much in love with Justin. That means that she'll do anything to help him out. Including being disloyal to you. Well, I don't believe that. Well, you better start believing it. She'll do everything she can to keep that man... And if it's at your own expense, well, it's at your own expense. Rena. I know what I'm talking about. You just be careful of Ashley. She's as dangerous as Justin is. Look, I don't think Justin's a threat to me, not as long as I have Dennis's support. Don't count on that. Dennis is behaving very flaky lately. And what do you mean, flaky? What does that mean? Well, you never know what he's going to do next. He told Iris that he was going to vote with her to get you out of the company. Well, as it turns out, he had no intention of ever voting with her. How do you know that? Because Dennis told me. So if I were you, I'd watch out for Dennis just as much as you're watching out for Ashley and Justin. Rena. I know that one of these days... Justin's going to outsmart himself. Don't count on that, Ryan. I'm certainly not. I'll get it, Vivian. Ah. Hi. Can I help you? I'm Lurling Harper. Uh, you're Mr. Wheeler, Lacey's father, aren't you? I am indeed. Are you a friend of Lacey's? Well, I only just met her recently, but, um... Yeah, I guess you could say I was a friend. Is she home? Well, I don't know. Why don't you come in? Oh! Is there something wrong? Well, I've never seen such beautiful hair before. Ah. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll go upstairs and see if Lacey is at home. Thanks, Mr. Wheeler. Just tell her I have a message for her from Jeb Hampton. Jeb Hampton? That's right. Well, then, perhaps you had better give me a message. This is the first I've heard of your plans to invest in a film, Dennis. Well, actually, Dad, it's something that just came up. I didn't know you were interested in movies, Dennis. I wasn't until recently. But since I've inherited one-third of world oil, I figured I might as well do something interesting with my money. It's either that or let it pile up at the bank. Well, investing in a film is certainly interesting, all right. What did you say the producer's name is? Jack Brent. What kind of film is he putting together? Well, that's what I'm going to find out today. He's going to fill me in on all the details and things like that. I see. Well, maybe until he arrives, you'd have time to have a drink with Paige and me. Yes, uh, that'd be very nice. Oh, I really don't think I'm going to have time because he should be here any minute. You know, Elliot, I just forgot about something that I needed to take care of. Would you excuse me, please? We're still on for lunch. Oh, oh yes, I, I just have to check on a case of wine that wasn't delivered today. But uh, I'll have Alfredo go ahead and show you to our table, all right? Well, I might as well wait here with Dennis until you get back. All right. I won't be long. Excuse me. 
Bubba, I want you to find someone for me, an accountant by the name of Johnson. He used to work right here. Call missing persons. I ain't a detective. Bubba, this is important. You're the only person that can handle something like this for me. What is this boy Johnson to you? Can he prove you cheated on your income tax or something? Or something. I thought you trusted me, buddy. Why I want this man is no concern of yours. It's your job just to find him, all right? All right. You start out by telling me something about him. His first name, for example. I was just going to get to that. Here's a file from personnel. It's a copy of one. It should get you on the right track. He's also a member of a few national uh, organizations. That should help you track him down. You mean he might not be here in Houston? I doubt it, but you can start here. Baba, how, how much are you going to charge me for this one? Well, I'll, uh, I'll look all this over and see. Uh, I'll talk it over with Molly, let you know. Uh, Baba, Baba. Who's Molly? She's a lady friend of mine. She might be real happy something like this. Baba, I don't want any broken down honky-tonk girlfriend of yours involved in my personal business. Well, let me tell you one thing. There ain't nothing broken down about Molly. She runs a string of bars and vending machines, and she earns more in a month than you earn a year. <laughs> Is that so? Yeah. And she's smart as a whip, and she's got contacts all over the state. Well, she can't be too smart if she's involved with you. Well, thank you. You ought to know, buddy. Uh, I'm here from... Bubba, get started on this right away, will you? I want him found. I'll find him. The message was for Lacey, Mr. Wheeler. I understand. Oh, it's perfectly all right. I am her father. I know you're her father. But I'm sorry, Jeb asked me specifically to give the message only to Lacey. I see. I I'm really sorry. Well, then I'm to understand that I am not supposed to hear this message that Mr. Hampton asked you to convey to my daughter? No, he didn't say that. Oh, I'm sure that was his intention. No, I, I don't think so, Mr. Wheeler. Well, then I'm afraid that my daughter is not at home to you, Miss Harper. But I thought that you... Oh, I know what you thought. But I would appreciate it if you didn't bring any more messages from a man who doesn't have the character to come by himself. Oh, but you said that's just it, Mr. Wheeler. Jeb couldn't come. Dad, he... I... Luralene. <laughs> what a nice surprise. Hello, Lacey. You met my father? Yeah, we were just talking. What brings you by? I have a message from Jeb I was supposed to give you. Well, what's the message? Um, he told me to tell you uh, that he meant what he said the other night. How did all of this come about, Dennis? Did, uh, what's his name, Brent, approach you about investing in his film? Actually, it was a friend of Paige's who put us in touch. Friend of Paige's? Yeah, that's right. Anyone I know? Pete Parnell. Why would Peter Parnell contact you? Well, he knew I came into some money. He thought it'd be a good opportunity for me. I still don't see why he'd get in touch with you. Why not? Business is business. Well, I hope you'll forgive my being skeptical about the whole thing, Dennis. I just hope you're being cautious. That you go into whatever deal you make with your eyes open. My eyes are open, Dad. How much does Jack Brent expect you to invest? Well, I'm not sure. $500,000? Maybe more. It's a lot of money, Dennis. The movie business is very risky. I agree. But sometimes the outcome is worth the risk. Well, I just hope it's a calculated risk. That you know what kind of track record this Jack Brent has. That's exactly what I intend to find out, Dad. Oh, I guess if I, I arrive, sorry, I really. it's all right. Oh, Elliot, good to see you. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, Jack, you know Dennis Carrington? Sure. Uh, this is That's his father, you. Elliot Carrington. Jack Brent. How do you do? Oh, you know, I completely forgot to make reservations. Alfredo, uh, I wonder if you could find us a table, the three of us. Certainly. It's still early, Mr. Parnell. Uh, be no problem. You follow me, please? Perfect. Okay. Nice seeing you, Elliot. See you. Bye. Pleasure. Dad, see you later. Bye. That was sweet of Jeb to send you over with that message. I don't see why he didn't come himself, though. Oh, he couldn't. He's left town. For where? For Dallas. Dallas? So he did it. Yeah. I really think he did the right thing. 
Yeah. Excuse me. Lacey, I'd like to see you for a moment alone. Sure. Let me walk you to the door, Lorleen. Oh. Look, look, I'm really sorry if I got you into trouble. Oh, you haven't. Well, maybe I'll see you at the coop or uh, out of the ranch. You will. Okay. Thanks again for that message. Bye. Bye-bye. So you've been seeing Jeff Hampton behind my back. I went out with him one time. That was all. Why didn't you tell me about it, Lacey? What would have been the point? You wouldn't have let me go. I have never stopped. You always come up with a reason. If it's not tickets to this, it's some social function that I have to attend. Or dinner at some fancy restaurant that you've already made reservations to. Dad, you always come up with a good reason. Always ends up the same way. That's not fair. No? Would you have let me go out with Jeb Hampton if I asked your permission? You're of age. You don't need permission. I just don't think that he's the kind of guy you ought to be seeing, that's all. Then who is the kind of guy I ought to be seeing? Tom Sanders was captain of the football team and he wasn't that kind of guy. Jim Fulton was head of the honor society and he wasn't that kind of guy either. I don't think that you will ever approve of anybody that I want to see. Lacey, I know that at times I seem to be a little bit strict. Now, maybe I am. But you are my... You're my daughter. You're very special to me. I just don't want to see you hurt. By someone else. By anyone mean... else. Oh, God, I'm beginning to understand why Mom was the way she was. Now, don't talk to me about that. It's true. You made her the way she was, and now you're trying to do the same thing to me. Oh. See? I'm not going to let you do that to me. Honey. I'm not! I wish I could tell her the truth. Get out of here. I'm not leaving until we've talked. I've got nothing to say to you. I don't want to talk to you. Get that through your head. I have to make you understand I'm not responsible for Max's death. I blame you. That's it. Now get out. Would you listen to me for just a minute? We used to be so close. We used to understand each other so well. I understand you very well. You are a thief and a killer. That's your grief talking. I understand how you feel, but... Max found proof that you were slant drilling. Proof that you were stealing oil from his property. The fact that Bubba Wadsworth took that proof away and destroyed it doesn't change a thing because Max saw it, and to me, that's what's important. Max didn't know what he was looking at. What did he know about engineering logs? He knew what the truth was. There wasn't a damn thing he could do about it, so he blew up the well. And he died. If there's anything in the world that I could do to change that, I would, but I can't. The only thing I can do is try to help you deal with this. Get out! I don't want or need your help. Now, you understand that. Oh, oh, I hate you. Everything you stand for. I'm going to destroy you. The same way you destroyed Max. You don't hate me. There was a time when we loved each other. I never loved any man the way I loved Max. You loved me, Rena. I love my Max enough to have his baby. Yes, Justin. I'm carrying Max's baby now. And before his baby is born, I intend to see you punished for the crime you committed. I committed no crime. And I'm going to make you understand that. I'm going to do all I can to 
make you understand I will succeed at this. You get out of here! Okay. All right. I'll be back. I'll give you enough time to think all this through, but I'll be back. We'll be friends again. I'm certain she'll make an appearance. Oh, I'm sorry, Elliot. That took longer than I expected. Did you get everything straightened out? Yes, I think so. Where's Dennis? His luncheon guests arrived. They're in the dining room. He's with Peter. She must be as surprised as I was. I just hope Dennis isn't getting in over his head. What makes you think that he might be? Peter Parnell. Something about him. Do you think it's a legitimate film deal that Parnell is offering? Well, with Peter, you really never know, but uh, my feeling is it's probably all right. Elliot, what would you think about having lunch in the bar today? The bar? Yeah, I think it would be kind of nice for a change, don't you? Well, would it make it easier for you to keep an eye on things? Well, Alfredo's in charge. Well, then but I'd just I... as soon have lunch in here if it's all the same with you. I was hoping that Dennis could join us when he finishes his business. All right. Well, shall we? Rena. It's all right, I'm here now. I didn't know where you were. I was at the office, honey. Beth called me. What are you so upset about? Oh, Mama, I can't stand it anymore. I just want him to leave me alone. Was Justin here? I tried to push him out of the... I tried to slam the door, but he just came uh, right. racing in here. I just... Sweetheart, just calm down. Now, what did he want? I don't know. I think he wants me to stop blaming him for Max. Why don't you? Because he's responsible. Pull back a little. Stop accusing him, and he'll leave you alone. He won't, Max. Honey, I I think your behavior towards Justin is encouraging him to act this way. Forget about seeking revenge. He's got to be punished for killing Max. Maybe, uh, maybe Daddy can have him arrested. For what? I don't care for what. For drunken driving, for speeding, Daddy will arrange something. They'll bring him down to the police station. Maybe they'll put him in jail. And then when he's released, Daddy can have him booked on something else. And uh, then we'll... Rena, get Rena, your father will not harass Justin that way. He would never do that to anyone. He'd do it for me if I asked him to. Honey, I understand how upset you are about Justin, but having him arrested... He should have been arrested for killing Max, but he wasn't. Now he's free to, to make millions of dollars, to steal oil from other people, to take Kate's ranch away oh, from all her. All right, now, that's what enough, are... Rena. You have got to forget about Justin. Look what it's doing to you. Forget about him so you can get on with your own life. He won't forget about me. He won't leave me alone. Yes, he will. That's something your father and I can take care of. And I promise you, he will not show up here again. I'm sorry for shouting at you like that. I certainly didn't mean to take my anger out on you. I know that, honey. Now, I am going to talk to Justin right now. I won't be gone long. Is anything you need, Beth is here. All right. Justin, where have you been? Drumming up business for the oil production division. You had oil. a meeting with Mr. Holbrook over an hour ago. I know. I'll call uh, Becky and I'll reschedule. It's all Mr. Right. Holbrook is the treasurer of the company, Justin. He's also on the board of directors. 
You don't just ignore a meeting with a man like that. I didn't ignore him. I just forgot about it. I'll call and apologize. You better do better than that. He doesn't like being stood up. The devil with Mr. Holbrook doesn't intimidate me. You're not thinking, Justin. It would help to have him in your corner. I'm sorry, darling. You're right. I promise I'll call and smooth his feathers. Well, did you come up with any uh, new deals? Yeah, I think I have one that'll be uh, consummated by the end of the week. Also, I am moving forward. I found somebody to check on that Johnson thing. What about dinner tonight? Where would you like to go? I thought you were going out to the ranch. No, I... No, I'm going to stay in town. I get kind of lonely out there without you. <laughs> I could cook you some dinner. No, then we just have to wash the dishes. Why don't we just go out tonight? Hmm? Oh, well. It's nice. I'll tell you what. Hmm. You call Mr. Holbrook, mm -hmm. and I'll make us some reservations at a nice place for dinner. Okay? Yeah. I think I might like a glass of white wine. Yes, uh, same for me. Thank you. Well, is there anything special you can recommend? Does it bother you seeing Dennis with Peter Parnell? Where are you? Oh, just a little. Yes, it bothers me, too, a little. I keep telling myself it shouldn't, that Dennis can take care of himself, but... Are you all right, Paige? Yes. Yes, I'm fine, Elliot, really. What are you thinking? Oh, it's not really important. Not Dennis? Actually, I was thinking about Peter. Are you afraid he's taking advantage of Dennis? I don't know what he's up to, Elliot. You're not on the best of terms, are you? I mean, you and Peter, I mean. No, we're not. Does that bother you? Oh, just a little. What I'm trying to tell you is that I do not want to make a typical horror film, you understand? I'm thinking more along the lines of something uh, <clears throat> a lot more uh, substance. Soul. You know what I mean? Jack, uh, did you want to talk to Paige? Oh, is she back? Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, hi, Lurleen. What's up? Nothing's up. How about you? Anything happened? What are you doing here in the middle of the day, anyways? I was running an errand for Jeb. What's wrong? Can't Jeb run his own errands? Well, it really wasn't an errand. It was more like a favor. Jeb's in Dallas, and I was delivering a message for him. What's he doing in Dallas? Went there to see Courtney Marshall. I thought him and Courtney were through. Yeah, that's what Jeb thought, too, but I think he's changed his mind. And he's going to talk her into coming back here to Houston? He's going to give it the old college try. Don't you think that's great? Yeah, that's great. Who stole your feedback? Huh? What? Well, you look like you lost your last friend. You know, I saw you on the Phil Roberts show yesterday. I pretended late, but I thought you looked real cute. Um, noticed Elena's name was taken off the sign out there. She's still on vacation? Yeah. Lena's taking a long vacation. In fact, she don't sing her at the coop anymore. Why not? Did you book her somewhere else? I'm not managing Lena anymore. I don't know what her plans are now. Since when have you managed her? When? Since she canceled that thing at the Phil Roberts show. That's when. Mm, so that's it. I set that whole thing up for. You didn't have the decency to call me and... I don't know. And then what happens to that fool Robert has to put his two cents in? I swear, I wish... I wish he was here right now. I'd punch him out. You mean Phil Roberts get along? Get along? That two-bit phony kicked me out of the station. He called me a creep. Do you believe I'd call me a creep? Why didn't I punch him out? Why didn't you? 
But because it's Elena that I'm really mad at, I'd get up there and act like a complete fool because she didn't show up. I'm not going to forgive her for that, literally, neither. I don't think you acted like a fool. Well, I wish she was here right now, boy. I'd punch him right out. Billy Joe. Damn, Billy Joe, it's Bill Roberts. Billy Joe! Good buddy. Good friend. <laughs> I have to get back to work now, Justin. I'll see you later. Yes. Uh, listen, mm. when you talk to Ryan, why don't you ask him about getting a couple of weeks off so you could uh, visit with your parents? Why would I want to do that? Now, don't start jumping to any conclusions. I'm not trying to get you out of town. I just thought maybe you'd like to talk about your wedding plans to your mama. I don't have any wedding plans to talk about, Justin. You will soon. <sighs> Well, what I will do is ask off for tomorrow, and maybe we can go to the beach or something. Oh, I'm, I have a full schedule all day tomorrow. Why don't you ask him for Thursday and Friday, and then we'll go to Fisher Island, all right? Vicky, what a pleasant surprise. Hello, Mrs. Bellman. You didn't give my message to Justin. Yes, ma'am, I did. Uh, what message? That you leave my daughter alone. I don't know what game you're playing, Justin, but I want it stopped. Calm down. Your little visit to Rena this afternoon left her in a near state of hysteria, and I will not permit that to happen again. She's having trouble enough coping with Max's death without you harassing her. She's blaming me for Max's death. Precisely why you should stay away from her. The more you antagonize her, the stronger her desire is for revenge. I never meant to antagonize her, Vicky. Well, that's the effect your little visits are having on her, and I want it stopped. Now, if necessary, I will hire guards to protect my house. And if you set one foot on my property, you will be arrested. That won't be necessary. I just wanted to comfort her, but I didn't succeed, so... So you will leave her alone? Yes, I will. You have my word. Your word isn't worth much these days, Justin. Oh, Vicky, by the way, congratulations on your becoming a grandmother. Rena told me she's pregnant with Max's child. Hello, Paige. Nice to see you again. Hello, Jack. Nice to see you. I'd like you to meet Elliot Carrington. We met a few minutes ago. Elliot Carrington. Journalist? Well, yes, I'm the journalist. <laughs> I knew it. I mean, Pete mentioned your name, and I, I thought it rang a bell. It's certainly a pleasure to meet you. Excuse me. Somebody use this chair? I have read every single thing that you wrote from Cambodia. Everything. In fact, I was going to buy the rights to a lot of them, make a film of the stuff, you know. It seems like that's what people are into nowadays, you know, the Mideast kind of thing. Except that guy, uh, what's his name, Capacopola or something like that. He beat me to it. <laughs> I guess I guess that's the break. Huh? Yes, I suppose it is. Listen now, Paige, I'm, uh, I'm sorry that I uh, didn't get a chance to talk to you the other night. Now, Pete whisked me out of here before I had a chance to talk. I thought maybe we could uh, get together while I'm here in Houston. Oh, I, I'm awfully busy these days, Jack. Well, I'm too busy for an old friend, huh? Oh, well, I, I just started back to work recently. Well, supposing I give you a call? No, I don't think so. Well, can't blame a guy for trying. Anyway, I just wanted to stop by and tell you that, uh, well, if you're ever in my area, you know, stop on by. Nice meeting you, Ellie. Yes, nice to meet you. Hello. See you later. Who is that man, Paige? Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas.
Thank you.